my neighbors, good citizens all. I thank you for coming and heeding the call. Let's rally the people and bring them all near. Sing out our songs for the whole world to hear. This is the cradle of all that we are. This is the heart of the storm. This is the ground where the future was born. But this here is Anvil and this is our home. Each song that we sing and each story we tell. Each hero we name and each life that we sell. Each breath and each beat of your heart is a beat of the drum. Give me drink in my cup and friends who will share it. Song on my lips and ears that'll hear it. Fire in my eyes to light all the good people I see. I tell you, my friends, there's nowhere that I'd rather be. Before ten in the morning, we're barely alive. We're like ghosts, we're like spirits, and then coffee arrives. Then heroes awake. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the uh, belated uh, stream here. Um, we're here, we got, we're started. It's boiling, it's a million degrees, and I'm hot and sweaty. But we have Abby with us, who has joined us from, uh, from Australia, and where it is normally a lot hotter there than it is here. So I can't complain. I will though. So thank you so much for coming, Abby. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, of course, man. Um, we're we're always happy to help out, you know, epic fans. So you know, uh, I, I think a lot of people forget that you know we're not just a company. We're also a giant pack of nerds. Yes. Yeah. Larp, larp for larp, no, larpers for larp, larp for larpers. It's a uh, it's a nice. It makes a change um, from a, a company that I won't name. Uh, didn't like me criticizing them. Uh, <laughs> I, and I've been very gleeful in my criticism of this company <laughs> as well. So yeah, but still, we've got every everyone's here. This, this is good. A lot of comments on your hair at the moment, saying it's glorious. <laughs> so I, yeah. I have had offers to uh, to purchase it. So really? you know, like human hair wig. You know, good good Irish red. Two thousand pounds. Uh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Apparently, well, that's what they go. For. <laughs> oh, so, okay. I wonder how much. Oh, I, well, I should point out it goes down to my butt. There's like a lot of hair here. So, see, my back hair goes to my bum. It's great, but it keeps me warm in winter. That's for sure. So I get a comb over that way. It's like <laughs> like cousin it from the <laughs> like like cousin it from the back. It's good. Yeah, like if you got a pet cat, it gives them something to climb to get up to your shoulder. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Rachel has said, I feel like this stream got like 60% more metal with that hair. It's <laughs> That's awesome. So, currently, it is 10 past 7 in the evening over here. And for Avi, it is just after 4 a.m. So, uh, yeah. I re this. It's a lot of appreciation here. Ravi doing this it's yeah crazy it's crazy i was i would have been happy to do this later as well to give you oh. a bit more of a lie-in but so like the the irony is that if we'd done it later um you know anytime prior to 10 a.m i'm not actually awake i can i can go through the night no worries uh, i do not get up early <laughs> true so, lap style see so I'm the opposite of that. I, was like, I can get up early, no issues, but I don't get hangovers. So when we go LARPing at our, well, for like for us, Empire LARP, uh, which is a, like a three-day LARP fest. So I'll wake, I'll, I'll stay up drinking until 4 a.m., go to bed, and then I'll be up again at 8, get ready off and go off and have a big fight. No hangover. I had a hangover when I was 14, a long, long time ago. I've never had one since. So nice. quite pleased with that. Uh, Jesus, yeah. So we're saying thank you to you at the moment. So that's really nice. You're getting, you're getting a lot of love in chat right now. Uh, you, you guys are welcome. You know. So 
<laughs> so, uh, Kyle, thanks for subbing for nine months, you crazy person. So, uh, so Helen, uh, one of our uh, Twitch mod and my other half, she has uh, two questions for you. True. So, does Avi LARP himself and do Australian LARPers have much different array uh, for things they purchase or look for in LARPing styles? There's a lot of Viking-esque right. stuff that Europeans seem to love. Um, so, Straight yes, into it. Uh, I've, I've been LARPing. Yeah, no, I, that's great. I've been LARPing for a long time, like um, back in high school before LARP, you know, really took off in anything more than just like, oh, it's a bunch of people who are too into their D&D. Um, so I was in a World of Darkness campaign um, throughout high school. Um, things got a little bit crazy. Uh, one of the guys in the chapter had a psychotic break and actually attempted to stake a couple people for realsies. Um, so I stopped <laughs> LARPing for about a decade. <laughs> um, yeah, like that was crazy, absolutely crazy night. Um, and I got back into LARP uh, when... So let me back that a little bit. Obviously, like I'm, you know, a bit of a huge nerd. If I was LARPing in high school in the '90s, uh, you know, D and D, Tragic the Garnering, you know, DOS based video gaming, all of that. Um, and so, like, I've always kind of been like the Duke of Dork, as it were. Uh, I started Australia's first manga publishing uh, group, and I ran Melbourne's Anime Festival for a few years, and then I wow. bought Melbourne Science Fiction Bookshop. Um, and it was during the sci-fi bookshop era. Uh, and this is just before Book Depository became a thing. Yeah. So, you know, we'd bought in at the worst possible time. Anyway, I had flavored out the fantasy section with a whole bunch of LARP weapons because you can't trust nerds with steel. No. And the few LARPers that did exist in Melbourne at the time would actually come in and be like, oh my God, you know, these are the exact things that we use for, for our games. I'm like, yeah, they're pretty cool, huh? And they're like, how much to buy them? And I'm like, uh... 20 bucks more than I paid, I guess. Um, and so like it quickly became known in the Melbourne LARP scene. And Melbourne is not a small city. Like no. we're at 4.2 million people now. Uh, the city is a hundred kilometers across. So um, the LARPers that did exist would come because we had stuff that was cheaper than buying it online because Australia tax, you've got to pay like 80 to 120 bucks to ship a single LARP sword here. Never mind what you pay for armor, and that's if it doesn't get caught up by customs, and then you get slugged with a five percent tariff and a ten percent GST, and possibly even get it, you know, caught up in customs doing one of their, you know, like uh, weapons tests or ballistics tests, where they'll charge you an extra couple hundred bucks just to, you know, faff about with it for a couple hours yeah. and go, yeah, that's nice to have. Um, and so very quickly we went from just being like standard customers of mm. Epic Armory to wholesale account um, to promoting LARP to all of the people that were coming in because I'm like, oh, you know, like fast forward, it's now 2011, book depository has become a thing, nerds being, you know, very quick uh, on the uptake of any new tech, so ebooks and purchasing online. Yeah, yeah. Um, the bottom was falling out of the book market, but I had these LARP weapons and cosplay props, you know, and stuff around the store that were doing really, really well. Um, so we spoke with Epic Armory, we upped our account terms and spoke to a couple other suppliers as well uh, at the time, because um, the bookstore of Science and Swords is actually still a going concern as Australia's largest LARP retailer now. Um, so yeah, we also spoke with like Calamasil and uh, Talia Nemesis and sort of transmogrified from being a sci-fi fantasy bookshop um, into a LARP store full time around 2013. Um, and it was cool. basically about that point where I got back into LARP in a hardcore way. Yeah. And I noticed that things have really, really changed in mm. what I recognize as LARP from 15 years ago. Like basically, the standard for LARP in Australia is basically rugby for nerds. It's much closer yeah. to Blood Bowl than it is to a LARP. Um, yeah. You know, we get together on a big field. We have literally hundreds of combatants every week for a couple of hours who are just slugging it out. Because, um, you know, we're convicts. We like a bit of biff. And, uh, <laughs> you know. 
I actually got asked today. I said, "Am I going to make any convict jokes during the Zoom?" And I said, "And I was thinking to myself, if that I remember, would be racist you... if you did." Exactly. I, said, Me, I, I, I was going to say, "I said, to us, I don't think I'll need to." <laughs> That's so, yeah, fantastic. Um, basically, uh, I got back in and and doing it as a bit of biff actually has been a real good gateway. I don't know if it would work elsewhere, but it certainly works really, really well for Australians to get yeah. them into LARPing. So we've gone from being that sort of stereotype of 20, 30 nerds in a park wearing blankets for capes to yeah. 400, 500 person battles on a weekly basis in one city alone um really and so cool. like you know through that i've then sort of obviously gotten a whole bunch of other larpers coming to me for their more parlor-esque larps their more nordic larps mm. and as the epic armory rep for australia i try to do my best to support these in any way shape or form and part of that is also knowing what my customers need so i go along to the larps as well so <laughs> um yeah I've, I've gotten very much into all manner of uh, LARPs. The only ones that I haven't really taken off here, so I haven't gotten into, are uh, the sort of ARGs, the augmented reality ones, um, and the online ones, you know, like the sort of Discord and, and Zoom-based LARPs, just because um, they're talking heads on a screen. I'm not into that. It's no. I find that very frustrating. Yeah. It, it yeah. feels more like D&D than anything. Yeah, you need, need to be face to face with someone because you get you you can actually read the body read the facial yeah thing. yeah you get, you get yeah. the cues from them don't you so yeah um my half just commented um that you had me at world of darkness because that's how i started with all of this <laughs> as well when i was uh, 16 and my cousin and he sat me down uh to play mage hated it and then he uh, then he picked up vampire uh the masquerade mm. and then it was werewolf so yeah, yeah I, I got sucked in through Werewolf the card game, and then uh, people were like, oh, you can do this as a role play. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Mm. And obviously, I ended up as a gangrel. Uh, wow, yeah. See, I, I get stereo. Uh, I'm uh, typically a Bria, and uh, and then it became uh, uh, Giovanni. So it's. I was going to say, like, you know, a nice, nice suit and tie. You could be a venturer. Oh, oh, how dare you, sir? How dare you? That's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> But no, I, I, if I'm suit and tie in it, it's a Giovanni all the way, all the way. But it's when I, I've done a LARP for Werewolf the Apocalypse. And sorry, everyone, this is a massive tangent again. I'm known for my tangents on this stream, so we'll be fine. Um, and uh, I got into I get into heated arguments with people when they're saying, oh, this is the best tribe. They're the best tribe. And it's just like, nah, Red Talons, they're the only tribe that actually adhere to everything that the Guru should be. Thank you very much. I believe you're all wrong. A little bit of a head wobble, and then I get asked not to come back and stuff. So, you know, that's how that one rolls. <laughs> so, um, I have stopped chat because I had to. They've, they've gone so far ahead with questions right now. So, I have to go back <laughs> and go keep Sorry, yeah. Go, no, 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 it's fine. Question, yeah, um, like part two of my question was like, what gear um, is different here, I guess? And yeah. Um, God, yeah, they're, they're really quite divergent questions, aren't they? Um, so obviously Australia is a significantly hotter climate than Europe, yeah. uh, year round. Um, well, at the moment, I think so we're we... winning. I think we're <sighs> winning at the moment. I wish we weren't. Yeah. Uh, hey, look, unfortunately, this is going to be the new normal. I think you, you're going to have to get used to our conditions here and we're going to have to get used to Saudi Arabia's, um, <laughs> But um, yeah, so obviously uh, significantly lighter gear is the standard go, but we got a huge number of uh, just like clankies as well. So, yeah. I mean, by and large, um, I think we probably sell a lot more of your modern composite armors. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the high density polyurethane stuff like Wim, yeah. Wick and Norton Armory makes. Yeah. Um, and now Epic Armory obviously has its own uh, light kit, which is uh, sort of a, a joint talent partnership thing with Wemwick. Um, mm. And um, so, yeah, like that that stuff is is really moving quite a pace. But I think uh, the, the two things in Australian culture that really stand out um, LARP combat-wise 
is one, uh, band guns, like the rubber band guns are a huge, huge thing here. Um, yeah, and it, it's very funny because like I, I regularly get asked by people, you know, it's like, oh, is there anyone that mass manufactures these? And it's like, no, no one anywhere else in the world gives a crap about them except for like maybe, you know, a small group of the Spanish players that go off to Conquest and Methodia. <laughs> wow. But uh, yeah. I, 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 um, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought that at all. Yeah, like just. Uh, but I think I think part of it is um, the sort of I guess false economy behind. If you have to make the gun and you have to make the band, it's significantly cheaper than archery. Except people never fact in like the cost of their own labor, yeah. that sort of stuff, because yeah. like we we've tried, we've really tried to like you know streamline the whole process and best we can do is like five bands an hour so if you're paying minimum wage each band costs six dollars of labor plus material you know etc cetera, etc cetera. it gets very close to the cost of hours um yeah so yeah. i'm sure there's a way to sort of just get a machine to stamp out you know rubber bands to do it but mm. again that requires a machine blah 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 um the other thing that's really huge here stabbing people uh like just the straight on thrust right into someone yeah it's that um, stuff. i like that stuff yeah so um we have this huge sort of misnomer in the market between you know something that is stab safe and something that's going to be like durable for thrusting mm. um i think that's probably because most people's first exposure to a weapon here uh is calamacil stuff which is very 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 durable when you just doing the straight on thrust but um tends to slash up quite easily on yeah. uh shitty armor that doesn't have rolled edges so no no yeah, that's some roundabouts in terms of durability yeah that i mean that's something that we uh we look at here um as well we have uh with well with the amount of weapons that we have so like all our weapons checkers at any larp they're always looking for the rolled edges they're going to make sure that nothing's poking out and things like that mm. so to tear weapon like the heads off an axe a mace or rip a sword in half or things like that as well so but we also have do you i mean when it comes to the fighting do you have uh the rules on like when you're hit when you're when you're twatting someone are you pulling blows a little bit just to make sure yeah so like, like it, it really depends on which game you're at so Swordcraft is one particular rule set that actually dominates the market here, like totally, totally dominates. It's kind of like, um, I guess, like like Dagger here in the States. Um, and so Swordcraft probably takes up about half the, the player base Australia-wide. Okay. And then because Swordcraft is so large, it basically sets the standards for yeah. a lot of the other combat-oriented LARPs. So we do have rules like, you know, you're meant to pull your blow, but at the same time, there's this sort of contrarianism because, you know, there's also, as written, hits should be realistic. So, you know, like without proper combat and stunt training, how do you do that? Yeah. Um, and we're, we're quite lucky that like some of the groups like um, Brisbane's Swordcraft chapter, uh, one of their admins is actually a professional stunt person. Um, Brisbane basically being like the home of um the australian film industry mm. uh so there's there's actually quite a few sort of like you know people who are into stunts and and down here in victoria um in melbourne we're quite lucky to have most of uh australia's battle of the nation team involved in swordcraft okay. um so like these are guys who know they can fuck you up and also know how not to yeah so yeah. oh that's good that's all right then yeah so yeah it's, it's nice to hear because i mean it's it's this is this is one of the things that I was really excited to talk to you about because you obviously you hear about um, like the like um, the LARPs in Scandinavia so the 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 proper Nordic LARPs you hear about conquest mm -hmm. and stuff like that in Germany and you hear horror stories about America um, and it's it's all true damage, true damage, true damage, true damage. <laughs> I had there's, I've, I've, a friend of mine Jasper uh, they live in uh, L A. And I've had Jasper on to chat to a couple of times and it's really good because we've had a nice frank chat comparing UK LARP and America LARP and the difference differences are quite astounding. They really mm. are sometimes. I just, oh uh, yeah, I, I, I think we could talk for about an hour on America yeah. LARPs. 
And that, we uh, that we had an American LARPer come visit us at our big um, big annual quest event. Like that's what it used to get called. Now it's using a less generic name. It's Blood and Gold now. Yeah. Because uh, everyone started calling their weekenders and and week long festivals a quest. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, I think like 2017, we had this American guy come out and he just could not get his head around the fact that no one did damage calls. Uh, and it's like, fun. how do you know when someone's dead? And it's like, uh, the honor system. Yeah. What if they're cheating? Then you just get your entire war band to gank them. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. The 20 of you pegging the shit out of someone, they're not going to get up yeah. from that, are they? So, yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, if you've got, I don't, I don't care how good you are as, as a combatant, there's no way you're fighting six people no. so as i mentioned we have you know the battle of the nation team uh yeah. fighting with us here in melbourne and one of these guys chris fogwell was australia's longsword champ like international was the longsword champ for a, a good long while like two years i think and even he can't fend off six people no you know so you know we, we've had other players who's like no no i totally did and it's like no mate you are not better than the international longsword champion no no i mean you can get lucky fighting against professionals. It's like, I hate fighting against fences. When you're, so uh. when we're, so in a bat, when we do battles at Empire, yeah, pretty much. So when we're doing battles at Empire, it's like a thousand people on the field. So two armies of mm. 500 and you're going at it. And it's like, I see some people and they're doing all this, all this shit and going da, 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 like that. And there's me with a hammer and a mace going, I'm going to go over that way. Someone else can deal with that thing. And I'm going, I'm oh, just no, ignore it. I can't fight. I just can't fight against them. I hate them. Yeah. It's my, my preference, a short spear. So, uh, so it's the blunt force trauma for me. Always has been. It always will be. I'm not, I might use an ax occasionally, but that's pretty much it. So, um, I've got a more technical question for you now when it comes to weaponry. Uh, this is from Pete. Uh, how do latex weapons stand up to the Aussie heat? Or do you have to use other materials for your weapons? So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not the heat. That's the problem unless you're dumb enough to leave it in your car. Um, and seeing you, you guys are experiencing our kind of heat. Don't leave latex weapons in the car. Uh, audience, love of God, do not leave latex weapons in the car in this kind of heat. Um, and it's, it's not cause like the latex will melt. It's because you have like these tiny microscopic little bubbles of air that you just can't get out. Yeah. And they'll expand between the foam and the latex layer, and then they'll move around um, as the yeah. heat makes that pocket of air expand and contract, mm. and you will end up just skinning your own weapon from the inside. Um, so, pro tip. Uh, what's really killer on latex weapons is actually the UV conditions in Australia, um, because, you know, like... No one talks about the hole in the ozone layer anymore. That's like 1990s big climate concern. Yeah. Um, but it's basically just over Tasmania, which means that Australia um, gets particularly, particularly in, uh, you know, the spring going into summertime, uh, a hell of a lot more UV. Like the UV index used to stop at 10, but we now have days that go up to 13. So, <laughs> yeah. Ooh um like th there are days that i literally can't go outside even with spf 50 on um they're, they're not common but they happen um so basically the solution for that is to just you know silicon the crap out of your weapons and you can actually rub sunscreen onto them um if it's one of the sunscreens that has a moisturizing uh sorry a non-petroleum based moisturizing agent so if it's like a lanolin based sunscreen you can actually rub that into a weapon. Uh, we've discovered this through trial and error. The petroleum ones will break it down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I shouldn't laugh, but yeah, that is quite funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, even even the non latex brands actually suffer pretty badly under Australian conditions. Um, so, Calamacil used to be injected polyurethane. They now use uh, a proprietary foam called Califoam, um, which i don't know exactly what that is uh one of these days i might take it in for for an analysis or something but you know i'm hoping that they'll be nice enough to just tell me sometime <laughs> um because we also like i whilst i am the epic armory rep for australia i'm also the largest distributor of calamacil in australia um because <laughs> you know we we play nice 
uh, or at least I like to think that we we tend to play nice yeah um, down under because the market's not large enough not to no um, but yeah so like even injected polyurethane will break down um, we've had the strongholds on the market for a while strongholds being made out of a uh, also a proprietary foam mix uh, from Epic Armory I can't really tell you much about that because I've signed an NDA but what I can tell you is that they are probably the longest wearing under Australian environmental conditions. Oh, okay. um, they do break down eventually. We left one in the window for about nine months and it, yeah, it took about nine months for it to break down. And that was like, that was intentional because um, yeah, yeah. we do a lot of destructive testing here. Well, I suppose you have to get, yeah, find out more about these things. And also it's fun. Yeah. I mean, like the other thing is as uh, a player myself, um, you know, and I guess as like an authority figure uh, to the local market on this stuff, I need to actually know what I'm talking about. So like with Epic Armory products, it's not that difficult. I'm on, I'm on the team. So I get all the, um, all the technical specs uh, when I ask for them. But with the other brands, uh, I, I do have to basically, you know, get an extra one as a sample and you know, do my best to tear it apart so I can actually tell the market, it's like, well, you know, you can expect, you know, this much out of this particular product, you know, whereas this product isn't as good, but it's like 30% cheaper. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, I think uh, Abby's question is probably going to be best suited for, because uh, Rene has said that he'll come on when I've spoken oh. to, uh, when I've spoken to everyone. So, because uh, Abby's asked, how did Epic Armory come about? So, oh, that's definitely a Rene question. Uh, I'll say that's definitely a Rene question. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, Becca has asked, are there any LARPs in any other countries that you really want to try if you had the ability oh, to? Like all of them. Um, so, before COVID was a thing, I was actually scheduled to go over to Conquest of Methodia. No, to. Yeah, Conquest of Methodia. I was meant to be a bad guy. Um, I always get it and Drakenfest confused. Um, Easily done. But yeah, like the the idea was I was going to do like Conquest and Drakenfest and, and Vark and Metalfest uh, in, in one big holiday. Um, I have very much wanted to come and check out uh, Empire as well, um, mostly because I, I still need to do like a trip to the UK. I haven't been for 15 years. Um, You're not missing and, <laughs> it's a bit shit over here to be honest <laughs> well I'll, I'll be honest I, I mostly want to go to Scotland um, Scotland's fine <laughs> you know, see, see if I blend in um, yeah <laughs> but yeah yeah give us if, if you do if you do come end up coming over to the UK let us know we'll get you into Empire so if you got yeah. if, if you got uh, four days free and that will get you sorted out we'll get you get you done for empire and that's so we get some that would be absolutely fantastic and mm. like of course you know bicoline i i very much uh desperately want to check out because mm. a bicoline is sort of like set this standard that we are trying to emulate here down under with their site um so swordcraft itself owns a very large very nice property here in victoria but you know thanks to um a very regimented bureaucratic council system which is very similar to the uk's uh it's been six years and the only thing that we've managed to get developed so far is an access road and a bridge uh it's it's oh, insane whereas the guys up in queensland have managed to strike a deal with a um a medieval commune that has built their own medieval village um wow. so if you ever yeah, if you ever want to check out LARPing Down Under, I thoroughly recommend Swordcraft Queensland's um, long-form events because they will be at a village that actually has functional NPCs um, that aren't part of Swordcraft. These are like actual people that actually live there and actually do their medievalism uh, on site yeah, in we... this medieval village that they've built. So there, there is a question about that. Um... Oh. Uh, Bethany's asked, uh, is there an Australian LARP that's just so good that we should definitely fly over to try it uh, if or when we can? 
So, so what's the so? So go go. Oh, I was going to say, like, it really depends what you want. Uh, if you want just straight up rugby for nerds, that's constant fighting with a little bit of drinking in the evenings, and you know, like the other evening activities like talent shows and gambling. Swordcraft's main quest. It's a full week. It's anywhere between 800 and 1500 people, depending on the timing of it. Because, like, sometimes it clashes with huge, huge events like PAX. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, very frustrating when that happens. But, um, so that's, that's, you know, like, if you just want a huge biff camp full of nerds and, you know, a little bit of story. If you want something that's very, very much a more role play oriented thing, um, it, uh, I, I found that the New South Wales guys, um, Cycadia or the Western Australian guys, um, Shattered Worlds, although I think they've changed the game name recently, um, put on very story driven events, um, very, very yeah. immersive for, uh, what they can do given their budget constraints. Like we're talking LARPs that are put on for, you know, after site fee, there's only like three or four grand left in the kitty for, for props and sets. So, you know, like, but what they managed to do with that is really, really amazing. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, uh, we've, we've had a, um, a number of people attempt to do things like the Wasteland Weekend. Um, it, it's not really panned out from the LARP side of things. It's ended up more just like, you know, being a um, post apoc themed bush doof. Which, you know, that's fun too. Um, but if you wanted to go and LARP at it, uh, pretty much the only thing that you're LARPing is that you've got any sort of environmental consciousness uh, when you attend these events. Um, yeah. Which is a bit sad. And then also, like, going all the way back to that World of Darkness thing, um, a number of the World of Darkness cos uh, a number of the World of Darkness LARPers and a couple of the cosplayers have managed to take over one of the local goth clubs. So... <laughs> That's kind of entertaining. So what you're saying then is I, I'd have to get a load of people. We'd have to plan like two weeks in Australia to fit as many of these in as I possibly could. I mean... Because LARP rugby yes. sounds absolutely great. I would love... That sounds like something I'd I'd enjoy, running around beating the crap out oh, yeah. of people. For and, and we even have like our own sort of spin-off of Blood Bowl, which is Troll Bowl. So... <laughs> um, but yeah, like... The problem with trying to cram it all into two weeks, one, travel. Um, Australia is a huge country and it literally takes uh, a day to fly between cities just because of the amount of time involved at airports. Um, and we don't have like any kind of fast rail infrastructure that would actually speed that up. Driving between cities is a massive chore. Um, it was very funny, actually, when Rene came to Australia for the first time. He was like, oh, we'll come and see you in Melbourne. We'll take a day trip to Sydney. And like, how are you getting there? Oh, we're going to hire a car. That's a two-day trip just to get there. <laughs> um, wow. Like, it's it's 1,200 kilometers. So, oh, okay. 800, 800 kilometers. 800 kilometers. That's um, insane. Yeah. Okay, oh, look, so, um, so a month then. Well, three weeks yeah, yeah. a month might be better then. So, yeah. So, and then to, to Helen, my the... fiancé, and my 12-year-old daughter, I will be missing for a while. <laughs> Just steal a loaf of bread. You can be here permanently. <laughs> Too true. Oh, God. Yeah. No, that sounds awesome. It sounds like it's... Because uh, I, I did a little bit of... Um, I'm working on a project at the moment with uh, Jasper uh, from LA. And we are looking at doing uh, like an A to Z of LARPs from around the world. So I, I, I said, right, okay, well, I'll have a look at A. So it's like we just went Australia. And I was just, I was, it's, there's a lot. There's a lot more than you think there would be. That's for sure. Hmm. Um, and I think, I can't remember what it's called. Is it Black Powder? I think it was called. Oh, Black Powder and Bloodlines. Yes, another yes. very story drawn yes. one. Very yeah. cool. That did look really good. So I was looking, I looked, it's I had a look at that. Yes, I saw that they, they posted something saying that they were struggling with uh, to keep things going and yeah they were, they were going to look at it again so but yeah it's I mean, it, if, sorry go on oh i was gonna say like they, they could always sort of re-kickstart it but the problem is that you've got the uh, original player base who are like whoa why do i have to pay in again yeah. um but unfortunately like i think um 
I think a, a lot of LARPers have this sort of sense of entitlement once they've bought their gear and bought into a game, which is not taking into account the business realities that we are currently going through uh, these last 18 months. Mm. Um, you know, I know just from my own customer base, there's like a lot of people like, oh, I ordered this like six months ago. Why isn't it here yet? And like, because it has to come by sea because air freight's gone up 500% and mm. every port that it stops at, it has to stop for quarantine and COVID checking. Like, and then... Flip side, I've noticed that the games, a lot of people are complaining about, it's like, oh, you know, like Swordcraft was promoted to me as being these 400 people battles. And it's like, yes, but the current state health guidelines say that we're only allowed to have 50 people on the Oval at a time because COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there's been a lot of stuff like that. I think we've, we've been quite lucky really with... Um with Empire that the majority of people here play uh, run by profound decisions. They've been really good. They, when they canceled the first event, they said to people, we can refund you all your tickets if you want to, or we can transfer, we can make it into an open ticket. So you just, you have the next one and then the mm. money will just basically be kept and then it will pay for that event. So they've been really lucky. And a lot of people have been buying open tickets to put more money into it as well. So, it's, they've been so for Empire. We've been really supportive of them and stuff like that. And because of COVID as well, it means that I get to start this whole Twitch thing up, and I get to do this because beforehand I wasn't doing anything like this. So it's been just like you say, when uh, times are times are hard and people laughed at you. You said you wanted to open up a lot business. Hmm. So yeah, so I I can understand it from like from both sides, but I think that. If you love a hobby, you're gonna you're gonna throw money, you're gonna throw oh, yeah. as much money into it as you can. So it's so for me with a hobby, I've been trying to do with this. I've wanted to get as many larpers together, so brand new players, people people who wouldn't have ever considered it, and just say Look, this is what this is. Oh, I'm gonna do a stream and we're gonna talk about it, and you can ask questions and we'll try to get you in more interested. And in the most part, it's worked. And we've had so many new players here. And we have a fair few brand new players who have never been to a LARP before. Well, they have now. They've thrown hundreds and hundreds of pounds in it. They make their own kit. They're insane mm. for it. And it's amazing to see the keen from all of these people. And it's keeping everyone going through what we've referred to as the longest dark. So it's it's been it's been really good really time. good to see it is I'm stealing time. yeah go for it <laughs> go for it yeah the longest dark and it's been really nice because everyone's sort of like stuck together so as a community mm -hmm. so within the the um the hefty yeti well the hefty fan as they've dubbed themselves we've got everyone's really supportive everyone helps each other out and and things and we do little like fundraisers and bits like that purely so um like because uh, a lot of artists and stuff like that are struggling at the moment as well so like they do commissions and things so i've been so any money that i get from this i make i pass over to artists and people who make things so we get to give away so, so i'm giving away armor weapons we're about to be visited by uh the void Ooh. oh yeah everyone will like the cat it's fine yes this uh she, she's here so i'm gonna have to introduce her yeah Ugh. This is Geiger. She is 19. So my cat is old enough to drink and fight in a war. Excellent. And all she does is scream for snacks all the time. That's good. But yeah, so as communities go, it, it's it's quite nice. I mean, have you had a lot of support from your like from your regulars and, and things like that? Um, so well, as best as they can. Yeah, yeah. Like because Australia is such a vast country, um, like, it really doesn't seem that way because we've got such a sparse population, or not even, like, we actually have a really dense population in our five cities, and then it's sparse everywhere else. Um, so because we've been able to basically lock down borders between states, uh, COVID's actually really affected different parts of the country at different times. Mm. So during the first few months of COVID, when uh, Melbourne entered it's you know like that internationally renowned uh 120 days of lockdown which really sucked 
Uh, we're in another lockdown again. Yes. Um, we still had uh, like a good, good chunk of the country totally unaffected. And because I live just on the other side of the railway line from the warehouse, um, I could sort of pull a little bit of a Swifty uh, and use my one hour of allocated exercise time each day to just walk over to the warehouse and then spend that time fulfilling orders because couriers were deemed an essential service. And so other than the fact I had none of my minions uh, to help out, um, like it, it didn't change at all for me. So like people didn't really yeah. feel like they had to uh, assist us because like for people in Western Australia and Queensland, well, it was business as usual. And I totally get that. Um, so like other than the physical struggle of having to do all that work on my own, um, it was pretty much, yeah, like same, same um, as it ever was for us other than the shipping issues, obviously. And also, you know, like we're a business, uh, we're an incorporated entity. So I can also understand a lot of people just being like, that's the risk you take running a business. Like it's not a community driven organization like it was when I was running uh, the Manga Publisher or the Melbourne Anime Festival, yeah. both, which were community organizations. This is a for profit business. It's mm. what I do for a living and not just my living. You know, we support seven other employees and a bunch of casuals. So, um, you know, in that respect, uh, you know, capitalism, free market, sink or swim. I get that. Uh, it'd be nice if there was uh, more of a community sentiment. Um, yeah. But I also understand why the only community sentiment that I sort of got was from the people that knew me personally. Uh, you know, like the, the people that I play with on a regular basis. Yeah. And, you know, hey, that is that is what it is. Mm. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. It's difficult mm. to know what to say and stuff, isn't it? In no, no, no. Like, it's, it's, it's a commercial reality. And I, yeah. I bear absolutely no ill will to, you know, the rest of the, you know, LARP community for it. I totally get it. Because, like, if you don't know me personally, then the business is just a business. It's just a website. Mm. Um. But I, so, I think to me in that situation though, if if I knew that like there's only there's only this place that we can get all our stuff for LARP and this is happening, it's like, well what can we do to keep it going? So it's like we are in, we've been encouraging people to buy from the from traders and things like that just to help them out because this is their livelihood at the end of the day. So I would mm. have thought so it would have well, it might just yeah, be I me, think... but I think that would have been a quite a nice thing that if people did that. So if Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I think um, that's also like one of the sort of big uh, social socioeconomic differences between here and the UK. Mm. Our government's actually been very, very generous uh, in supporting small businesses uh, throughout the COVID period. Well, at least up until the end of last year, like up until the end of 2020, the government was very generous. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a huge tax bill in the next few years. So I can also sort of understand that anyone that's sort of forward thinking and be like, yeah. well, you know, my tax bill is supporting these guys anyway, so it doesn't particularly matter. And at the same time, um, you know, I know that in the UK and, and in the US in particular, um, businesses, you know, got quite screwed over. You know, most of the business support packages went to companies that really didn't need it because yeah. they could afford to hire the sort of people you know, who just sit there writing, you know, the grant proposals and filling out the paperwork all day. Whereas, you know, your, your small, yeah. you know, five to 30 person business doesn't have the personnel for that. No. So no. in that respect, again, like I totally understand why, mm. you know, that sort of uh, community sentiment wasn't here locally. And as well, you know, like people in Australia are used to having to get stuff online. You know, the fact that you know, we exist here as Epic Armor Australia and of Science and Swords, um, is I think more of a novelty in some ways, but also uh, seen as a convenience. You know, like if they weren't going to get it from us, then they'd hop on to, I don't know, like, well, not Amazon because there's sweet FA good LARP gear on Amazon, but yeah, the, you know, they'd, they'd hop on to the relevant websites. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's nothing at all. Because one of the things I, I, I was talking to Rene about was. Uh, one of the good things about Epic Armory stuff was that 
it's it, in essence a lot of their kit is almost a blank canvas as well mm. you can take it all in so that we've got it's like within the hefty family we've got so many talented uh, embroiders kit makers and things like that and they will take the canvas and then they'll make it into something that just yeah. makes me want to throw away all of my kit to get new kit so it's it's they are they are that good and it's yeah and it's and that's what i really like about it but you look at amazon and it's just like well well yeah there's fuck all there but there's there's well the, the companies that we've actually banned companies on the discord as well um well no wish and aliexpress because yeah they've just, they've just nicked everything from all these other companies and then they pawn it off and it all falls apart in five minutes and stuff like that mm. so but yeah it's i mean like they're, they're they're platforms that serve as marketplaces in the same way that ebay is it's just yeah. you know they they happen to not have any punitive policies against bad faith traders no. so like i i know stating wish and aliexpress is the umbrella term but um like it it does need to be pointed out like the the platform itself it's, it's like agnostic as it were um sorry i come from an it background so like those sort of differences used to be my bread and butter yeah um but yeah like I, I totally get your point about the sort of tabula rasa nature of epic armory gear and it's it's recently very recently we started doing stuff that's got a very definite look to it because that's what the mass market has been asking from us but you know from day dot up until about 2018 like the idea was to be able to provide uh some entry-level kit that you took and you did stuff to it and yeah. i know that the flip side of that argument is and i see this all the time from like eastern european larpers um you know it's like oh you know off the rack armor is crap it looks plain it's boring and it doesn't fit right it's like well yeah that's correct it also happens to be at a price point that you know you can't match and the reason for that is you're meant to put in your own time and effort into you know shaping the armor you know like get out the rubber yeah. mallet and get it into the shape around you you know add some stuff yeah. you know make it look interesting and renee and i have had discussions about this as well you know dating back as far back as 2015 could we make a premium line of epic armory stuff yeah easily um do we want to not so much that's like the end of the market for berg schneider and arm street you know the, this absolutely beautiful stuff that looks great off the rack yeah um you know it's absolutely lovely super durable but if you try to modify it you're gonna fuck it up whereas epic armory is you know like hey guys here is a base that's gonna save you eight to twelve hours yeah yeah and it's nice it's strong it's durable it it keeps you warm as well so it's mm. yeah oh yeah the gamerson's a great inventor mm. Yeah, we've got. Uh, I think the the orange trousers are being uh, uh, doted on at the moment by a couple of people in the fam uh, and stuff. So, because I actually I bought one of the uh, the gold scavenger box. Oh yeah. And so I did an unboxing on that the other day, and I was a bit. Some of the bits I was a bit shocked to have in there. So I've got like a Persian yeah. helmet by my feet at the moment um and i've got some nice uh, romanesque looking uh pax leather armor and that which is really nice um but yeah this is all, this all going to be going off to there's a photo of me somewhere wearing one of the dresses as well the uh, is i think it's an isabel extra large i don't fit in it at all but i shouldn't be wearing it but I've, there's a picture of me showing off a bit of knee in it so you know you've got to have fun with these things but yeah, so yeah. it's all. You can't take yourself too seriously. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was uh, really excited. It was so sad about getting this box because I wanted to see what this this kit looks like, what this kit feels like, to give it a bit of a pull and just to make sure it's going to be durable. And it all is. And it's like, and I'm not even. It's. I said this on the unboxing. I was like, I'm not saying this because of, like, I've been chatting to Rene for a what for a couple of months now and. And all this, I'm not just saying it because of that, because as has been found out on previous streams, I will just, I will always tell the truth about this stuff. And if it's shit, I'll say it's shit. Mm. And I haven't come across anything yet that I've looked at from Epic and gone, it's a bit crap, this. And it, yeah, I wouldn't bother with that. The RFB double back scabbards are terrible. <laughs> well, there we, we go. That. There we go. I, did, <laughs> I haven't had anything like that. So we got the armor, which is great. This helmet, which feels amazing. And 
it's nice as well because of the care that when it goes into it being packed as well. So you're not going to get this shit turn up and go, well, that's no. rusted. This is this is damaged and all of that sort of stuff as well. It's lovely. Yeah. It's really nice. I mean, nice. like the, the, the issues that I have with some of our other suppliers on the retail side of it where, you know, they, they don't put bubble wrap on things or, or they don't put any separators between the weapons so that, you know, in transit they fuse together. Yeah. Or, um, yeah, like I, I've received a, a lot of rusted stuff from a couple of different suppliers in the past. Yeah. And, yeah, like, I mean, like one of the reasons why we actually approached... Um, Renee about being, uh, you know, in, in partnership was just that level of quality. And when yeah. there was a problem, uh, you know, Renee was super quick to be responsive about it. And it was like, you know, there was this sort of, um, you know, business relationship that was very much what I want out of, you know, buying something at a store, yeah. you know, like if there's a problem, you know, make it easy to, to solve. You know, um, and and so, you know, that was the sort of store that we wanted to run as well. And it just sort of seemed like a natural fit. So, yeah, we sort of shook hands and became Epic Armor Australia. And, you know, that's actually something that we really endeavor to do. Uh, you know, here, Epic Armory Unlimited over in the States, um, uh, sorry, in Canada, actually, but they service the United States. Yeah. You know, basically, you know, we may not have that, you know, just send it back and we'll swap it over for another thing. Um, because, you know, sometimes we can't do that, uh, stock levels or, you know, straight up user error, but we'll, we're always going to try to, you know, find some way of, you know, making it right. If something has gone wrong, because we stand by the quality of the product. Yeah. And we want to, you know, people to have the experience that you just described. So, mm -hmm. you know, if they don't have that experience, then we try to fix it. Yeah. Because it's actually the second unboxing that we've uh, we've done. There's um, uh, Abby in the fam. Uh, we did a socially distanced unboxing, and it was hilarious. It, I I can't wait to see what she does with all the video footage when she edits it together. I was crying with laughter at points with that, mainly because Abby's like three foot tall, but she she's not uh, she's five foot four. Five foot two, so that she is tiny. Nice. Yeah, she's like a kitten. She's just a bundle of energy, and the stuff that we were get, she was getting out of it, it was, it was so cool. It was really, really cool, and you can. It's. I think this is where Epic step up from compared to other, um, to other companies that sell LARP stuff. Is it's the it's the care that you get from it, as well. So mm. it's like like loads of emails come from epic on that side of things and stuff like that got an email from renee saying oh i've just seen you've bought this and stuff like that they put stuff they put stuff together for and it was yeah it was really not it's it felt like dealing with someone in a shop face to face but you're doing it online mm. and that's that's quite rare for me that that's quite a rare thing to to actually receive and and stuff so but yeah the, the care's definitely there it's a wonderful thing and Long yeah. may it continue. Well, we, we try to run the kind of store that we want to shop in. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, I think that's the best way to be. Yeah, you, it's like uh, treat people as you want to be treated yourself. It's that's the sort of uh, adage I think that you can you can get from it. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really cool. That's really really cool. So what's the sort of, so what's the sort of next steps for you? Then are you getting uh, more stuff in? Is have you found well? How's business been? We ignore COVID. Yeah, so build up to COVID. So, was business actually growing for yourself? Then was it? Or yeah, yeah. Um, up until COVID, you know, like you know, just exponential growth here in the Australian market. So, you know, basically all the way up until the beginning of 2020, uh, we saw this growth of about, you know, on average a thousand new players a year, um, and. I like to define a regular player as someone that shows up about, you know, just one game once a month. Um, and so we'd see about 300 regular players wow. joining uh, the community each year on average. Um, and even, even these last two years, it's actually still been decent, just not as good, obviously. But um, yeah. so, yeah, like the Australian markets really, really picked up. And in that respect, 
I, I think we're probably at a point where we're large enough to sort of start pulling the kind of stuff that you sort of see from factions at larger events like Conquest of Methodia. Mm. So for instance, uh, I already mentioned that Swordcraft sort of pre-COVID saw like an average of like 400 fighters every Friday night. It's actually got a significantly more extensive community. I mean, like obviously nationwide because it's the half of the gaming population, but um, mm. like the the weekly player base is not representative of the size of the total community as no. obviously yeah. with any kind of um, gaming based community. But we have this one faction or war bands as you know they're, they're called in the system um called the north who are you know just your bog standard vikings um and they have 220 250 members okay. so like <laughs> they are now actually like at the the size where a they could split off and form their own damn larp and they've been doing that they go and do their own you know weekenders where they've got like internal faction power struggle type things That's um cool. because that actually happens in any large community of nerds anyway. Yes. So, <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. Um, what better way to settle it and, and still all be friends than, you know, trials by combat or subterfuge or whatever. Um, so mm. that's, I think that's actually a really cool conflict resolution mechanism for, for a community. Yeah. But like, they're, they're large enough that they're genuinely considering um, wanting to get specific kit made for themselves in the same way that you know, there's the Conquest Undead set and the Conquest Black Ice set and the Conquest Ratio sets. So, yeah. um, you know, the same thing could quite easily happen in the UK market if you get, like, a large cohesive group together. Um, we do. We, we've, we, we have it for at Empire as uh, well. I think all across all of ours. So we've got uh, Profound, we've got uh, PD, CP, LT. They're the three, like, really big like fest larps that we have over here and within those you've got all you've got so if i use empire as an example so you've got uh 10 nations within the empire and then each nation so the nation i'm in is uh wintermark so it's a mixture of like uh saxon not vikings but vikings but they're not vikings um <laughs> uh, so you've got that and then they've got all halls within it as well which is like little player groups so for the group I'm in, Hurst Hall, we have a boar and a crow. I can actually, I've got something here actually. I can actually show you something that we had made yeah. for our group. Very cool. So uh, where I wear um, a lot of plate and we all have cloaks and things like that. So these are oh they are very cool oh yeah that way there you go so these are proper these are for the uh for the cloak so Oops. these are yeah. yeah so these are really these are solid we've had these purpose made for us we've got five of them or six of them i can't remember but yeah so we have that we've got all these things on like uh made uh, so for armor that people have had made and stuff like that as well so but within the game, it's like my my character's actual like blood family are called the Two Feet. So I've got two feet footprints uh, tattooed on my head when I'm at the game as well. And you can you see random members of the family just sort of like in all of the nations because like our progenitor put it about a bit. So and that's the sort of joke that we come up with. But a lot of the groups will have their own colors, standards mm. and things like that. And they go off and they get it all made up for the group. So you can have a group of 12 people. And they'll all be very uniform and, and things like that. So uh, within Dawn, we've got a brand. It's as a House Baronor, I think it's called, which is all brand new players, and they've all got same kit, and they've all had, and it's all the same. So we already have a lot of stuff like that already. But it's it's great to know that to see this like uh, the North in mm -hmm. Australia that they're come, they're thinking of. A, I really hope they do it, and I would love to see pictures of it as well. I think that would be awesome to see. But yeah, we get yeah. got loads yeah. of it. We're, we're still at that point where most players are sort of doing the the special snowflaking sort of thing, and it's there are very there are a few groups here, but not many 
where it is sort of like a, a standardized uniform like so obviously the north and anything that calls itself a free company has a, a standardized uniform because of course you do you're a mercenary outfit but um <laughs> other than that it's it's not that common so like you know a warband has to have colors and it has to have a sigil but other than that like you know standardized kit is still a rarity which um i i think's a bit sad because you know seeing even just 15 people you know who are able to do a formation all in the same kit that's actually kind of terrifying in fact it's it's yeah. more impressive than you know three times as many people who are just a ragtag mob yes yeah we've got a nation called the marchers which uh essentially think old british uh like um bill hook unit and they all do reenactment and stuff like that together so when you get this unit marching into battle together and stuff like that, it's like 60 of them all just going mm -hmm. off as a unit and then they form up and fight and it's just like yeah yeah i'm not going near that i'll go in that direction instead please so thank you for playing yeah uh and stuff. <laughs> i've just i've just been reminded of something that i need to do for the uh for the community as well uh the past the brush thing if you want to do it you got until tomorrow thank you curtis yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, oh, that's really good to, that's really good to hear that they, you get big game, you get big luck fest a week long as well. I'll have to have a look at that. So, I mean, yeah, mm. was, I mean, if you know, uh, if you speak to people involved in it or and stuff like that, then tell them to get in touch. Cause I'd love to, I'd love to hear yeah. about oh, that. Look, hey, if, if you do manage to make your way down here, um, you know, do let me know and I'll, I'll make sure that we have you know, something set up for you so that you can, you know, broadcast us out. I mean, I, I find it very funny that Swordcraft manages to do so much simply uh, on virtue of being uh, first mover advantage and also just sort of like an absolute juggernaut in size. Mm. But um, they, <laughs> they're not great at promotion <laughs> at all. Yeah. So... Yeah, uh, most of the larger LARPs tend not to be. In fact, I, I think, um, oh, God damn it, who? I think it was Drakenfest that bjorn has been doing ads for. Do you know Bjorn Lundberg? Um, uh, I think the, the name rings a bell. I think Abby he may He works have, with Bergschneider? Yeah, I think Abby put, yeah. uh, put a link uh, to him in the Discord. Yeah, fun point. guy. Um, yeah. But yeah, like he has been doing absolutely beautiful video content. And so, like, Drakenfest and, and Conquest managed to do absolutely amazing stuff. And then, like, everything else looks like someone's handy cam, not even phone, but, like, handy cam, you know, poorly cut, poorly shot, you know, straight to YouTube at, at 480p. <laughs> well, I'm not great. <laughs> I do this. So this this is this is fine for me. But, I mean... Funny enough, I'll, I'll get this. Uh, this is um, a live stream, so you know, yeah. like it's. I mean, my the, the, my community they brought uh, they helped me buy uh, this wonderful, four uh, K. Oh. Uh, uh, Orbot or whatever they're called. Yeah, so it's on a nice on a gimbal. It's four K quality. It's amazing, and um, this is what I'll be using to do because I want to visit as many events as I can. So like you mentioned, mm. Bickeline, I would love to go play Bickeline. I want to go to Conquest. I want to go to Drakenfest. I want to go to. Uh, there's one in Denmark. I think it was yeah in Denmark where they've actually got a Viking reenactment village mm -hmm. set up. Yeah, yeah. And it's and it's uh, I think it's five days. There's no power. They've got running water, and all of this. And they say they have one Jenny in place as well. They have one generator in place. Uh, if you want to have your use your phone, you have to bring your own battery packs and stuff like that. You are sleeping in one of the houses in this village as well, and it's really hardcore. If you've got a horse, you're allowed to bring it. It's amazing. Cool. It's absolutely incredible, and I would love to do that. But obviously, because of COVID, uh, they don't yeah. they don't think they're actually going to be able to run it at, anymore. So it's a bit of a shame. But I would love to visit. I mean, yeah, I'd love to come to down to Australia and and wow, LARP rugby sounds amazing anyway. So. Mm. Uh, I'd love to do something like that, and I'd love to go off and just say, get get your shots. You should be able to be here next year. Like they're they're going to try to open open us back up next year. So, well, you, you can, know, you can... your, what's her face, Katie Hopkins. Uh, you know the 
<laughs> yeah. Did, did you hear about what happened with her? Deported. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Great. I love it. <laughs> it made me laugh so much. We were just, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of people from the UK were just thinking, yeah, but do you have to deport her back here? Can you send her somewhere else, please? Because we don't want her. We don't want her. Well, we, we tried to fob her off on New Zealand, but, uh, you know, they're wise to our tricks now. So, like, they won't even let us claim that Taika Waititi is one of ours. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> there's another question. Is that, uh, do you get many orders or have much contact with the New Zealand LARP scene? Um, funnily enough, not, not as much as you'd think. Um, so, thanks to just international shipping... Uh, being what it is in Australia's transport infrastructure being, um, you know, only only put to shame by its broadband network. Uh, <laughs> it is cheaper for, for the Kiwis to actually get stuff from America um, than it is from here. Like even, even if I were to make the price exactly the same uh, in terms of the equipment that they're buying, the shipping from Australia to New Zealand is more expensive than the shipping from the US to New Zealand, which is bizarre um but you know that they have it the other thing is yeah. that in terms of gear um thanks to the lord of the rings films like all of that armor all of that clothing uh was made is physically extant mm. and you know was given to the extras as part of their pay package you know one of the reasons why filming new zealand was so attractive was because you know you don't have to pay them entirely in cash no uh like I don't mean like New Zealanders as a rule. I mean like extras in films. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah their compensation can be non-monetary, um, and so there's like still three or four hundred complete sets of Lord of the Rings kit floating around in New Zealand's LARP scene. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. The um, the the really huge irony is that now that they're doing the um, new lord of the rings tv show yeah uh <laughs> we've we've been tapped on the shoulder a couple of times by the costuming department so, so have you still got any of this stuff? can we have it back please Is that yeah, what, yeah basically oh, jesus i mean i would have thought that i mean working as an extra or something like that they would have been tapping on the shoulders of the larp community for extras in films quite a lot yeah yeah oh well weirdly enough um uh the the reality show from from the uk the the hunted or something it's you know where they basically send bounty hunters after you yeah um yeah like they're, they're trying to film a season down here and they've tapped the larp community so i am thinking of applying yeah that could be a lot of that, that sounds like it could be a lot of fun I, I i got offered a uh a role in a computer game uh trailer um oh, cool. essentially medi uh, medieval gta uh, so it's called Rustler. Um, so I went down to a, a local um, medieval living history village, just down the road from uh, around, down the road from me. And yeah, I was down there for the day. Had all my LARP gear, kit on. I was a body collector, so I felt a bit typecast. I was just pushing this really heavy like trolley up and down this hill all day. I was knackered. I was like, but it's so Bring much fun. Dead. Well, I wasn't allowed to talk. I was just allowed to give people filthy looks, and it was really good. So, um, yeah, and it was really, really good fun. So I think in those sorts of things, it's like a lot of people, when anyone in the film industry, reach out to LARPers because of things like grown-ups and... Mm. Uh, no, not, was it not role models. Role models, that was it. Yeah, well, yeah. Anything like that. It's You look at it and go, yeah, but how are you going to portray us, though? Because yeah. LARP gets a lot of shit. We get a lot oh, of yeah. shit in the community. And so. it, it really doesn't help that, um, you know, just in the last year, thanks to all the people, you know, who slapped on MAGA hats and, and Proud Boys, uh, who very clearly were making their riot shields from, from LARP designs, that the term LARP started getting used yeah. to uh, describe that particular type of dickhead. So, yeah. you know, like... Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't good, but it was it was quite nice to see on the other side as well, um, when they were using all of the when they were obviously making LARP shields, but they were doing it properly. So, cause I think there were a, there were a few shots 
of people they're actually using um uh, we've got a, a, a guy called darren uh, from a regular props they've actually used his oh, yeah. shields to protect themselves in riots because they're they're, <laughs> they're quite stuck oh, cool. so they're just yeah that's so you're seeing all these uh, like teardrop shields in a line it's just like that's amazing it's, it was great to watch but yeah it's i mean do you get much stigma over over there when it comes to larp and and things like that or is it a decade ago we did um and it probably still happens in some of the other cities but in melbourne it's become quite common like every like thanks to swordcraft being so large everyone knows someone that larps and melbourne itself has this sort of weird geek culture fascination going on like um we have possibly one of the largest esports arenas outside of asia um oh, okay here in melbourne it's called fortress and it's got a bar that seats 400 that looks like a tavern from warcraft so Fair. and then you know like they've got dungeons and flagons on a sunday where you can you know pay 20 bucks a head and they'll set you up with a gm provided you bring at least four people and, and stuff like that so like nerd culture is is really really quite embedded here in melbourne i'm fairly confident that if you were to go to some of the other cities um particularly uh you know in queensland um we we have a term here bogan it's kind of like a chav um so only um you know it's warm weather chavs yeah florida chavs like think <laughs> think of like if chavs bred with florida man that's a bogan right okay um, i like that i can like stealing that one uh <laughs> Bogan. but um yeah so like I, I know that the queensland players actually still get a fair bit of shit uh about it particularly if they're in their kit in the city mm. um most of the games no longer take place in more urbanized areas because of that uh and, and south south australia is very weird because like south australia is actually the cult one of the the cult capitals of, of the southern hemisphere mm. so <laughs> Um, I think a lot of people there just think that they're cultists, not people out for, you know, for, for wacky bats and, and role play. Yeah. We, I mean, we don't get so much of it, uh, anymore. It's like <clears throat> where we do a lot of like uh, weapons practice. So we have groups meet up and, and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. we used to get the police turn up and they'd wander on over and they'd say, oh, none of this. Did you manage to convert any? Oh, yeah, they'd all have a go. Yeah. They'd all have a go. It's um, I went camping uh, last year, so we had, like, um, a bit of a break in COVID where we were allowed, like, 30 people to meet up. And it was we went camping just before they said, no, six. So we got right in there. Um, the guy who run the campsite, he saw people were, like, having sword fights and stuff like that, and he came over, had a go, and then he went, right, as a thank you, here's like two bags of firewood and stuff like that. So, yeah, can't say fairer than that. It was really good. Nice. So, so yeah, it's we, we st I think it's still out there. But I think nerd geek culture is, it's become a lot more popular. It, it's, it's become a really mm. big thing. I mean, you've got likes of um, Geek and Sundry and what they do and yeah. crit Critical Role and Role. and all of these things on, on um, YouTube and stuff like that. So it does help massively and it's a really nice thing to see everybody getting behind it again and, and I love that. Yeah, uh, I mean, hell, even just the Dungeons and Dragons hashtag on Twitch has billions of views. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's it's nice to see like the World of Darkness stuff as well still getting a lot of love and mm. um, like LA by Night. Um, so that's been GM by Jason Carl. So I, I think one of the things that's really sort of helped normalize it as well is and and this is kind of a little bit tragic, but very specifically Vin Diesel. Um, oh, Vin Diesel yeah. coming up as as a nerd, I yeah. think really really sort of helped a lot of the people who are like oh i love fast cars yeah i'm gonna pound some nerds heads and then like vin diesel's like uh i just did the foreword to dungeons and dragons new rule book and yeah. they're like what yeah i'm okay with dungeons and dragons so long as i get to be the orc barbarian <laughs> yes yes and you get uh there's i mean i suppose it's um 
uh, what's his name? Is it Joe Manganella as well? And mm, yeah, so yeah. People who who look like that because yeah, nerds. Totally hot. Totally hot and like but as a nerd yes exactly that that's the sort of thing so i think everyone's sort of still like typecast as this so if, if you're a nerd you're gonna you're gonna look like us at the end of the day yeah. at least you can have the long hair you're gonna be you're gonna have a nice gut and you're gonna you're gonna be that and that's the sort of person that you are and it's like you walk into it and you or like you talk to all these people and you things like that it's you realize that nerd culture it has so many different backgrounds and everyone plays it so it's mm. like so i'm x forces and i know that a lot of people especially like uh submariners and in the navy where they have got a lot of time on their hands yeah. they sit down and play tabletop games so, yeah uh ev everyone i know in the armed services here is a tabletopper because yeah. like what else do you do on deployment between you know between anything you know like it, it's a hurry up and wait situation and if you don't have decent internet connectivity yeah yeah exactly so it's i haven't played i haven't really played tabletop in in, in a while um I mean, a funny story i got reached out by a tabletop group uh, quite a, a bigger uh, channel and, and things like that and they asked me to join their uh D, D game for a i think it was like a six a six episode run um and then they looked at my channel and saw how seriously i take things I, don't, I played a Call of Cthulhu game and I ended up shooting one of uh, like my colleagues in the back twice. So it's like I take it that seriously, and they just and they replied and they just said, "We don't think you're suited <laughs> for what we want to do." It's like, okay, fair enough, bye. But it's I love the fact that it's a it's become it's a, it has essentially become cool and it's a really nice thing. <laughs> to see so it's, it's like people i used to serve with they've said oh you do laugh and that's sad isn't it and stuff like that it's like no what do you think we were doing when we were on exercises we're not firing yeah. real bullets it's fake it's yeah f <laughs> yeah it's, we're firing blanks it's, it's making a, it's making a noise we're falling over yeah. pretending to be dead that's larp thanks this is this is one of the things that i really find so weird right like reenactors specifically reenactors get real shitty if you call them larpers but all they're doing is a historically accurate laughing, you know. We've got or... uh, we, we've got a few here um, who have yeah. come from doing la uh, doing reenactment, and they've moved over to LARP. So Pete um, and 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 quite a few others, and Jasmine, they do all of this stuff, and their kit is incredible. But they've moved over to LARP, and it's amazing. I I'm loving it. They're bringing a huge group from reenactment. I mean, we had hmm. a really I think it, I think it's the I think the word is horrific. Uh, people could have died um, encounter with some reenactors who came over to try a LARP. Um, they used to do uh, basically they wanted to do archery, and instead of using proper LARP arrows, they had Money made, they had made their own. These essentially were real arrows with a foam put over the end, and they said, right, fire that. So we use, like, 30-pound bows, 30 to 40-pound bows and stuff like that, and here, there they are with their proper reenactment grade yeah. long bows. Right, fire it at that tree, and there's an arrow sticking in a tree. And it, it's just like, nope. They fight. No. I think one of them actually fired an arrow in a battle, and the shields, the shields go up, and then it hit the shield, and there's an arrowhead poking through a shield. And the guy's just like, fuck it, I'm out. No, nope, I'm done. Thanks very much. So, so I've, um, I've I've taken the the IDV bar IDV arrows from bows up to fifty five pounds on the draw, and even at fifty five pounds, like that is a real painful hit yes. with a compression foam, three stage compression foam, um, and then like the uh, the blunts that the reenactors use, you know, and it's meant to be while they're wearing armor. They call them bunny busters because you can fire them from a 50 pound bow, you know, and you hit a rabbit, the rabbit's going to explode. Uh, you know, like I've seen these arrows leave dents in, in 16 gauge steel armor. Um, and, and I just, I find it so very, very amusing because then like they're, they're totally gung ho with the archery side of things. But then when, you're hitting them with the foam weapons, you know, you're hitting a lot harder than they hit, 
because they know how solid their normal things are you know it's like blunt steel or rattan or, or wood yeah you know or, or the nylon wasters oh my god those nylon wasters can shatter your bones and uh, <laughs> yeah and and they're like oh you're hitting a bit hard aren't you and it's like well you're the one using a 40 pound bow with a blunt head <laughs> so yeah swings it's... and roundabouts swings yeah. and roundabouts yeah definitely but yeah it, it's been nice to get a lot of people from reenactment come over hmm. we've got quite a few of them in the discord and they're, they're, they're really taken to it it's been really interesting just to like hear stories and we, stuff we like found that. in australia because like historical reenactment there is no medieval history in australia or at least mm. i should say there is no european medieval history in australia yeah um you know if people want to do uh, a medieval history larp in australia there's going to be a corroboree and a nice big fire and everyone's going to have to learn circular breathing to play the didgeridoo um probably a good time but uh yeah. um <laughs> It's it's any kind of reenact European medieval reenactment that you would do here is intrinsically a LARP because we do not have the history of it. Yeah. So you know, I, I feel that it's um you know people need to take themselves a lot less seriously. Uh, I guess is the takeaway. And actually, if you do come down under, there's this one event that you really have to try out. It's not a LARP. It's uh, I don't really know what to call it. Uh, it it's called Iron Fest, and it's a uh, reenactment festival of war, including wars that haven't happened yet. So they've oh, also got okay. like a Star Trek away team and uh, a Wastelander <laughs> camp and, okay. and steampunks. But they've also got you know, like Roman legionnaires and medieval stuff and jousting and all the way up until the uh, the Korean War to the point that they actually fly drones overhead with little skin to make them look like, uh, you know, like an old B-14 and then they fire an actual AA gun with blanks at it. <laughs> They're loud. They're very, very loud. That sounds interesting. Um, yeah, that no, it's so cool. Fun. And, and yeah. the thing is, like, they also, you know, purposely don't take it seriously good so they'll they'll have things like romans versus nazis you know <laughs> that <laughs> yeah that sounds like the sort of thing that I, I i would quite like to see but at the end of the day i mean we're, we're yeah like for me it's larp is a holiday for me it's I, exactly I, I got four or five days off and i go off into a field and i i pretend to i pretend to be this psychopath who drinks a lot, takes a lot of in-character drugs, goes off, does a lot of fighting, and and that's it. He's just a twat, and like that, and I get to relax, and yeah, I get to blow off a lot of steam. I don't want to take it too seriously. I mm. I really don't. I it's if I did, I would take this so much more seriously than I do when I talk to people about LARP, when I talk to people about the games or anything like that. And it's just like I want to. I want people to enjoy themselves. I want people to see the fun that we all do. I want everyone to realize how much we we fucking love doing this. I love to talk about it. I'm forty yeah. years old. Roll one, don't be a dickhead. Yeah, I mean, I'm forty years old, and I, I've been doing role play probably since and all this geeky stuff since I was like sixteen. So it's it's a it's a long time, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Really, really wouldn't. And I fucking adore doing it. <laughs> Go back to your uh, about the, uh, the bows and stuff like that, Pete. Who is our who does the reenactment? He says, "I have to say, I enjoy getting flat shot with the higher poundage battle bows whilst in my armor. Nothing quite like that thunk and thump." So, having, <laughs> I, I can understand, you know, like people who um, you know get that little bit of a, a adrenaline rush, that thrill from uh you know the the bunny busters hitting you but um I, I think pete really needs to try taking like an idv round like the, the just the idv round arrows uh from from a 50 pound bow and, and then come back still see if he enjoys it uh yeah. the bruise don't leave my thigh for three weeks yeah i mean i hate archers at, at laps i hate them at empire because every single one of their shots seems to find my balls it's a constant thing it's a constant thing it's, it's um it's funny that you say that because like you know being being the merchant here um you know new players are always like oh what's the very first thing i should get i'm like a cup i'm like <laughs> ha, 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 ha. no yeah. really i'm like 
well, if you're not going to buy a cup, then maybe you should buy a set of folds and tassets. And they're like, oh, how much is that? $300. I'll take the cup. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I still haven't bought one, and I really should. I did one battle where um, my unit, are sort of, we were over on the right-hand side, and you can see all the archers on the left. And when I say see all the archers, there's like 60 of them all firing out of a cops, and they're all just like leathering everyone. So I went running towards them, and they were all firing at me, but they were like they were just missing or I'm like to move to the side mm. and stuff like that and then the one that just lands and it just hits me straight in the balls and I'm just down on the floor because that shit hurts it really yeah. hurts and then I got up it happened two more times literally in the same run over I got shot in the balls three times until a ref just sort of said no just just give up I'll, I'll walk you back over there just we'll just leave it leave them alone <laughs> that's it Oh, I couldn't. I could barely walk. I was in so much pain, but it was great. As as Bethany has just said, um, says it's your fault, Steve, for having massive. <clears throat> then she apologises. Oh, it's it was painful. It's it's, but you do get it's you do get larp. You you still do get accidents and things. Accidents yeah. always happen. So it's it's just about knowing like not to shoot someone from too close and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, so it's. Funny that you bring up the the accidents is going to happen thing because yeah, like you can make as many rules about you know what's a safe hit and what's not a legal hit zone, yeah. and they're still going to happen. And so I've I've actually found the way that you know various companies try to compensate for that really really interesting. Um, okay. And I think you can really tell uh, which manufacturers are actually out there on the field from how they de developed the weapons to, to sort of deal with that. So like back in back in the before times you know like uh epic armories stuff for instance like the the fiberglass in the classic range was meant to shatter at about 80 percent of what it would take to you know break a, a healthy adult radius um which is about four thousand newtons of pressure hmm. um so you know like basically if you're hitting someone so hard that they might break your sword it's going to give way you know before then and also that's your punishment for hitting someone excessively hard because even at that level of pressure you know that's, that's still going to be you know quite bruising yeah. and um you know like nowadays instead we've sort of done a bit of a, a, a i guess a reflex on that it, literally speaking because like the new cores rather than breaking you can actually they're so flexible you can actually horseshoe them uh on the striking surface mm. so um I, th I think maybe one of the things you should do when you get renee on is ask him to bring like one of the new cores on just to show like it's it's actually impressive how much flex those things have that'd be quite interesting to see considering i i, I have had someone break a uh, um a claymore over mm. my head they brought it down and it it didn't bend it just it literally snapped yeah, the core snapped snaps. over the top of my head um so that was me with a concussion and it, yeah it wasn't a pleasant feeling at all no really really wasn't so and they got they got ejected from the field well from the battle anyway and got told to go and learn how to use a weapon properly mm. so because that was just that yeah that would that was way too much that was so yeah i mean the, the sad thing about that is if you'd been struck in the sides you'd probably have been like not side of the head but like you know shoulder or, or even like in the gut you probably would have been fine oh yeah Oh yeah, definitely. But it's it's I always, I'll always say to everyone, it's like accidents do happen. It's mm -hmm. you can't you don't know if it's like like with the arrows. I think the most common accident is when they're firing across, and someone ten feet in front of them runs in front and then gets an arrow to yeah. the side of the head. It's like that's that's really close. So I think um, I'm aware of someone actually being put into hospital with and they had to have surgery uh, like that day to. Um, well, to save their eye so it was you so these are accidents do happen all the time you can't you can't account for it mm -hmm. at all but it's where it's nice to see here that com certain companies out there are to do think okay well what can we do to like prevent these and do things and stuff like that but something yeah inevitable. We're, on, we're on the field as well so you know it's it's more about saving our own necks yeah um, yeah it's great actually like speaking of necks even like that's actually one of the ways that I've managed to, I think, uh, attempt to modify people's behavior because, you know, like you've always got, you know, you know new people who like, ha, 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 concussions, lol, you know, it's like, oh, I'm a 
big old toughy uns uns, and and so they don't take it seriously. But if you point out that you know the savage movement of the head is going to damage the neck, then they get concerned because yeah. paralysis is uh, you know something everyone's terrified of. So you know yeah. concussion is just a bad night. Paralysis is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's an interesting one, that's for sure. Uh, at this point, mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, nearly half of Steve's stories, and this is another beating. On, yeah, I, yeah, I, uh, I'm the sort of love. I get, I throw myself straight into everything, and I love it. Oh, I love it. Yes, me too. I really do. I, I'm um, I'm not a, I'm not like a line fighter. Um, my unit is now line breaker. So I'll if there's a line of people, like fifty wide, three deep, and stuff like that, I'll run face first into it as hard as I can, and. Well, I'm not as hard as I can, but I'll run into that line just to have the scrap, and oh, it's great. I'm, I've, I'm more of a harrier fighter. I uh, I like to find weak points and and pick at them to break lines. Yeah, we've got we, yeah we have lots. It's it's really nice about when you've got the big battles and you see how everyone fights and it's such a a vast array of different fighters in these fields. It's it's really really good to see. Something so, about the short spear, you you find you know like one guy who's struggling at the sides. Take a shot, get them to chase after you, and then just stop whilst you're running backwards, and they always run straight into the spear. It's great. <laughs> I'm sure people will be attempting that. So so what's we'll finish. We've got I've got one last question. We'll finish on this because I normally go for about an hour and a half, uh, and that mainly because I put my daughter to bed in 20 minutes. So um, no worries. What is your like defining moment when you have been laughing yourself? What's the best thing you have ever done for yourself? Because er everyone has this is the good thing about LARP. Everyone has stories. Everyone has yeah. things to talk about. So I um in the previous campaign setting, uh, my character was known as the bastard, um, and mostly because that's what everyone would call me. Uh, I, I was. I'm a large guy. I'm like in my armor, uh, you know, I'm six feet tall and I'm over a hundred kilos and yet I'm still able to sneak up on people uh, quite effectively. So, you know, I got called the bastard. Anyway, we're waiting, lying in, a, uh, lying in wait for an adventuring party uh, to, to come by so that we can ambush them, of course. And a different adventuring party walks by from the other direction roughly the same time we're like right in the middle when these two groups who absolutely have nothing to do with each other uh for this particular quest or you know they're, they're both on different side quest objectives but they assume that because they're meeting in the middle they are attempting uh for the same thing and that's the bit where i pop up out of the underbrush uh <laughs> and just sort of like start walking between each group very very sort of slowly and subtly you know talking shit and they're getting more and more heated uh after about five minutes of all this back and forth and i just you know scream out into into the uh <laughs> it's just straight up they are lying to you slay them to a man and both of these groups just went at it uh <laughs> And and did they they got down to just two guys from I can't even remember which warband it was because this is like six years ago, two guys you know both in in need of, of healing and they're talking to each other, and here's me just sitting on a stump watching them all kill each other, and these two guys you know are about to pull out their potions and that's the bit where I just pull out the throwing knives and peck them both and then loot everyone's corpses, <laughs> eighteen people's nice. worth of loot. That's nice. <laughs> I like that. That's a good one. Oh, if only we could get something like that going on at LARP. Uh, thanks for subbing, Tris. That's awesome. It says smile. I try. It's very hot. <laughs> it's very hot. <laughs> Just let the hooks do the work. Well, yeah, if only. <laughs> if only. I, I think I'd break the camera. Uh, yeah, I think John's just typified me quite. Uh, he's hit the nail on the head there. So, Claymore broken over his head, punched in the face with a metal gauntlet, Three consecutive nut shots, and I'm sure many oh. other beatings. Steve says, You've got a metal ball. I Very love tight, LARPing. Hey? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've I've had. Ooh. No, I haven't got anything like that. 
she punched me square in the face and it was just sort of like no missing uh, teeth. I was just caked in blood uh, from a proper like still got an eight. So it's um, yeah, I just oh dear oh dear. Yeah, I love it. I love all of this. So we could talk for hours, I feel. Mm. I really do. Um, so hefty fam right big holiday to australia i feel is in the cards now we're coming in well i say invade as you say we only need to nick a loaf of bread don't we so <laughs> so hey, look i'm just, I'm just going to put this out there for for like all of your all your subscribers all your viewers if you guys do want to come down to australia you know message epic armory australia on your way and we will try to set you up with a good laugh experience when you're down under well, if you if you stick at the Discord as well, then feel free to. I mean, we've got over five hundred people in there and, and stuff like that. Then everyone's happy to chat and stuff like that. So if you're ever coming over, I, this I would way love as to well, say I would, but um, I'm I'm not a Discord kind of guy. No. So. Well, we've got. Oh, I barely use Facebook. I hate Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I hate Facebook. I. Uh... I would be off Facebook if it was not for the fact that it is our primary point of contact with customers. <laughs> well, I will be sure to to check that in. So, but yeah, if you if you do ever come over to the UK, then yeah, get in touch. Uh, oh, definitely. With us on the, get get in touch, and then we will sort you we'll sort you out as well with a with a well awesome. with, with Empire if it, it's gone in or uh, or a, or a little player event Thanks or something like that. Oh, you don't want to say that because we'll have five hundred people there. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, all the points. Pony is my day. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, we have. Yeah, it'll be really, really cool. We do. Um, uh, yeah, we'll get that all sorted. And I would love to come down to Australia. I would love to do that. It'll be so much fun. So, and it's what coming up for nearly six a.m. Is it? Uh, for you? Yeah. Yeah, close to. So you can you, you'll you'll be up now for the rest of the day and you push on yep. through. Oh yeah, like I was saying by email, I'm I'm used to you know having to drive between cities, so no. this is far more in, you know engaging than having to stare at the white lines. I can imagine, I can imagine, but I would love to do something like this again. I really, really would mm. get. Yeah, and like if you get the people from any of the LARPs and stuff like that on just to chat, because I think this is the big thing that people like to hear about is just LARP in general. And I would love to do something like this again. So it'd be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So if yeah, if well, you, if you... Um, I was going to say like we've got our quest event, you know, unless it's cancelled because of COVID, coming up in um, you know very very early October. So if you are willing to sort of push a stream back an hour or two we could probably catch people you know during the breakfast slot yeah yeah i think i think chat would like that see people if they if people are going to be in kit chat about the game and froth at us then would love it definitely i would absolutely love it yeah we'll I'll do see that. what i can arrange yeah we'll do that we'll get that done we'll get that done and then we can have a chat at people <laughs> awesome. so um, yeah, so if you stay on for a second, then and I'll say say goodbye, and then we can do all of that. Because uh, I've done I've done this before, and I said goodbye, and the person I was chatting to just left. I was just I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, so yeah, thank everyone in, everyone in chat. Thanks so much for coming along, Avi. Thank you so much for being here, man. I really appreciate it, especially at this stupid o'clock as well. Yeah, no worries. It's, it's been a lot of fun. I'm sure I'm sure chat are very very grateful. Um, to you coming on as well so yeah yeah thank you both and stuff like that so yeah that's really really cool um everyone in chat go and have a drink please it's really bloody hot uh yeah thanks that really great to, to dominate that. yes uh cheers exes ever confirm i'm grateful lots of thumbs up cheers guys yeah that's awesome so uh i'll end the stream there thanks everyone for watching um i'm actually streaming again tomorrow morning uh, I'm chatting to Steve from Japan tomorrow morning. So Epic Armory's Japan this time. So that should be an interesting one as well. So yeah, should be a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, thanks. Take care. Much love. See you all soon. Bye-bye.